Good. Aaron, over to you. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm going to hide uh, this annoying panel. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Aaron Villanueva. Um, I'm a PhD candidate at the Donders Institute in uh, Radboud University, the Netherlands. And today's talk is uh, named Grover Like Speed Up for Combinatorial Optimization and the Fine Tuning Problem in Quantum Annealing. Uh, so we start this talk by uh, saying that hard optimization problems are everywhere. You, as a trivial, more or less famous examples, you have the traveling salesman problem, which you have to find um, the shortest path that, that path that connects uh, a bunch of cities and cities and passes uh, through each city only once. And we know that um, the search space for this uh, for this problem grows combinatorially fast. Another problem is the protein folding, in which you have an energy landscape and uh, and an energy landscape defined on the space of possible combinations of, uh, of a bunch of particles conforming a protein. And the problem is to find the minimal energy configuration. And this is, again, a combinatorially uh, expensive problem. And the other, the other example is from neuroscience, in which basically you have to find uh, the correct brain connectome or associated to a physical real brain in the, in, the, in the space of possible connections in which uh, your model is uh, having two neurons and two neurons uh, can be connected or connected or disconnected. Uh, so in uh, a system of a network of N neurons can, can uh, have a search space or, or, a, or, or a search or a, or a space of possible connectomes that grows uh, exponentially fast. And the last example, and not uh, least, is the tree satisfiability or tree sat, which is NP complete, which basically means one ring to root them all, uh, uh, which basically means that uh, if you have a, a, an efficient algorithm for solving this problem, you will, uh, you will solve immediately any other hard optimization problem as well. And to explain a little bit in which consists this, this problem, Suppose that you have uh, four binary variables and each, each variable can have a, a, a value of false and true or zero and one as you wish. And, uh, and we define clauses. Uh, a clause uh, is uh, basically a concatenation of uh, a logical ors. And basically this means that a clause will be true uh, whether one of the variables is true if none of them is true, the clause is, uh, is, um, is false. And with these clauses, we form instances. And an instance is basically uh, a logical and concatenation of these clauses. And an instance will be satisfied, we say satisfied or true, if each clause is satisfied by the assignment that we, we made in the, in the first place to the vector of variables. So in this case, for this configuration in which x1, x2, x3, and x4 has uh, have this pattern, f, f false, false, true, false, we will have the instant, the final instance is uh, unsatisfied or false. But if we change this pattern to false, true, true, false, we will have that the final instance is satisfied. So in general, for n variables, there are two to the n possible assignments. And this is this uh, depicts uh, an exponential uh, behavior in the number of possibilities, and this is quite a, a common feature feature of uh, of hard optimization problems in which the search space uh, grows exponential exponentially fast with the number of variables, and this is uh, why the analogy of finding uh, a needle in a haystack comes uh, is well treated in this case. So uh, now quantum annealing comes into rescue, uh, saying that uh, in, the, in the quantum adiabatic uh, uh, framework, we map each one of these possibilities of our op optimization problem into a state of our quantum computer, or in this case, in a state of our quantum system, the quantum system that is described by, the, by an adiabatic Hamiltonian in this, in this uh, adiabatic framework. 
And for this work, we study a specific adiabatic model in which uh, consists uh, in, uh, in encoding an on optimization problem of this form in which you have an energy landscape um, that depends uh, on, on, spin, on spin states. And each spin is a vector of n uh, binary uh, variables. And this function E is uh, can have inter integer values uh, from zero to m, in which m is order uh, n, the number of the number of particles or qubits of your model. And uh, a clear example is, for example, a three sat in which this m is uh, directly proportional to the number of qubits. And the, in the in the case of three sat, the quotient between the number of clauses, which is m in this case. And the number of qubits uh, represents an important parameter, which is a phase transition parameter in statistical studi studies of this model. So coming back to the adiabat our adiabat adiabatic model, uh, we encode our optimization problem into a final target Hamiltonian of this form, which is uh, basically diagonal in the computational basis and has the in, uh, has in its ground state uh, ground state encoding the the solution to the problem and the complete model basically consists on having a, an initial hamiltonian h0 uh, adding to the target hamiltonian h0 is is uh, basically the 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 equal superposition state projector in which phi is uh, this equal superposition of the computational basis Z in this case is our annealing param parameter, which uh, has range zero to a final ZF, which is a constant. And this Z plays the role of uh, our annealing uh, schedule, which depends on the normalized, normalized time, normalized by the total adiabatic time. Uh, so beta goes from zero to one in this, in this case. So in this model, we say that for z equals zero, h has ground state phi, and for large z, the ground state of h encodes the minimal energy solution. So studying this model, the, the, the adiabatic model that we defined before, uh, leads us to define uh, a, a characteristic equation to, to find the spectrum of this uh, Hamiltonian. And the characteristic equation has this form in which the n sub e are the density of the status of, uh, of, of our problem, of the optimization problem. And the characteristic function has this form in which uh, this uh, gray cu curve, the intersection of these gray cur curves uh, defines the, the different roots of our characteristic uh, uh, equation. So we can define the gap of the of the adiabatic model by the difference between the second and the first uh, root of this characteristic equation. So making uh, an, an analyzing the, the the gap in this with this characteristic equation, we find an expression, a closed form expression for the for the gap of the problem. Uh, remember that this this adiabatic model comprises any optimization problem that is suitable to for encoding, and which depends on the density of the states of the problem and in with the and in the with the number of solutions n zero uh, that we restrict to to be greater than 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 zero. So this 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 form basically says uh, that the gap depends on two functions z two and z one, which are these um, uh, partition sums that depends on the density of the status. And with this expression, we can compute the minimal gap that occurs uh, when the annealing parameter z is equal to z one. So when this happens, this uh, gap is uh, ends up being uh, order one over square root of n. So with this uh, analysis, we find that the minimal gap is uh, exponentially vanishing, and it occurs to in, in a point in the annealing parameter that depends uh, on the density of the states. So to to have to describe a little bit uh, a roadmap of our uh, of our research, 
uh, in 2002, Roland and Cerf uh, proved the existence of quadratic speedup for quantum annealing in the case of unstructured search. And they also proved in the same work, in the same paper, the optimality of this quadratic speedup, meaning that no other schedule gives better speedup for unstructured search. Later on, Farhi et al. in 2008 proved the optimality of quadratic speedup for adiabatic models of the form, uh, as you can see in the screen, in which HF encodes optimization, arbitrary optimization problems as, as, as our case. And this A is restricted to be a linear schedule, which basically is, is a, in linear dependency with the, with the unnormalized, unnormalized time. So this roadmap uh, gives uh, open questions, and we take this open question as our departing point for our work. The first question is, can we build a schedule that achieves quadratic speed up for arbitrary optimization problems? And the second question is, is this speed up opt optimal? And in this work, we respond both to this question uh, positively. For proving in the for proving the existence of quadratic speed up in our, in our model, we use um, three main three main three main ingredients. Uh, the first ingredient we use um, an ANSAT that appeared first in Roland and Surf 2000, 2002, which uh, basically says that uh, you constrain the the schedule of your adiabatic model to to this. A boundary value value problem in which you have a, a constraints on the value on, on the initial and final values of z, and basically this equation says you slow down the schedule in in the regions in which the gap uh, decreases uh, and and speed up in the regions in which uh, your gap uh, is big. So we use this answer. Uh, the gap expression that we found uh, analyzing the spectral uh, behavior of our model, and the adiabatic theorem, adiabatic theorem, which is a rigorous version, appeared in Albash and Lidar in 2018, which basically puts an upper bound to the adiabatic time uh, for a for a for an adiabatic model. Um, in terms of, of uh, to achieve a, an adiabatic error of this form, in which which basically measures the the Euclidean distance between the solution plane and the evolution plane of your of your model. So we use these uh, three main uh, ingredients to prove existence of uh, quadratic speed up, which basically it says that given the model that we defined before, there exists a schedule z depending on the on beta, the parameter beta, that achieves a time complexity of a small, uh, small o square root of n. And later on, we can prove also optimality of this quadratic speed up uh, by, this, by the next statement. Let big T be the total evolution time and P the probability of finding the solution at time big T. Then we can find an, a lower bound to the adiabatic time to achieve this probability of finding the solution that is a square root that goes like a square root of n. And the, this is an important result in the sense that this gives a lower bound on the general runtime of the algorithm, either the, the, the either the evolution of the Schrodinger equation is in an adiabatic way or a diabatic uh, way. So existence and optimality uh, can be achieved, or at least existence can be achieved once you know the density of the status. But this poses a fine-tuning problem in quantum annealing in, in our model. Because if we, if we have to compute the position of the minimal gap which, which occurs to Z in Z1, and Z1 is a partition sum that the that basically says count every state of your system, and if it's, if your system uh, explodes in exponentially fast in the number of states, you have to sum an exponentially big number of uh, of uh, states. This partition sum becomes uh, intractable. But even worse, even in the case in which we can approximate this uh, partition sum by a suitable uh, answer. This answer has to be exponentially 
precise since uh, the the partition sum which which uh, dictates the position of the minimal gap in the annealing in the annealing uh, in the annealing region says that the region in which the gap becomes exponentially small has width one over square root of n. So if you mismatch uh, in your ap approximation of your uh, of your z one, the position of the minimal gap we lose uh, all the quadratic speed that, that we gain uh, doing all the trick of uh, solving the differential equation that I mentioned before. So we lose all the quadratic speed up. Even worse, uh, when we try to vary from instance to instance, in the case of one single problem, in this case, for example, three sat, we find that the fluctuation of the minimal gap goes like one over uh, poly n. So this forbids us to build a general, even in the case in which we can compute uh, exp an exponentially precise uh, location of the minimal gap, this forbids us in building a general enough uh, or agnostic enough uh, schedule to achieve quadratic speed up for different instances of even the same problem. So uh, in summary, this makes unfeasible practical implementation of implementations of uh, quantum annealing in the case of the model that we define for this world. So you can ask, what about other mixing Hamiltonians H0? Well, numerical simulations in the case of the common transverse field show similar worst case scenarios for TRISAT in which uh, you can see it here in the figure, uh, the, 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 the straight line uh, violet uh, line goes like one of square, square root of n, and the blue line depicts the minimal gap for for several instances. And you can see that the behavior of the minimal gap is one over square root of n uh, in this numerical simulation. So this is uh, this is in uh, in accordance with uh, the 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 rigorous results that we show for the for the case of H0 being the equal superposition state projector. So uh, as, as at the conclusions of this work, we, we, we gave a proof of existence and optimality of quadratic speed up for arbitrary optimization problems, but designing a schedule that requires knowing uh, the position of the minimal gap uh, with an exponential precision uh, forbids any practical implementation of this uh, of this uh, algorithm, uh, and in line with numerical simulations, we conjecture that this fine-tuning problem is likely to happen for any other instance independent uh, mixing Hamiltonian. Oh, this is uh, the end of the talk. So thank you for listening. Good. Thank you very much, Aaron. Very nice presentation. Let me give you a round of applause on behalf of. Um... Uh, all the members of the audience, uh, and I will um, open up open up the uh, floor for questions. I see that Viv Kendon has a raised hand. Viv. Okay. Right. Hello. Can you Hello. go back one slide to your reset stuff? See. Si. Oops. <laughs> Which one? Uh, no, no, the the last three set, the three set one. Very, whoa, wrong direction. Maybe here. Um, no, where you had the the graph one one before conclusions. Okay, with the scaling, the numerical scaling on it. Ah, oh, sorry. Yes, this, this one. one. Yes. yes. Now. What you've shown here that the gap scales like this, See. but you haven't shown that the width and the fluctuations are also have the same behavior. Well, uh, that that wasn't showed in this uh, in this talk, uh, neither in the paper. But uh, we we have we have uh, we have seen that the width of the gap is even worse than the case of. Uh, uh, the equal superposition state projector. Um, yes, it's just that I, I mean, actually the paper got published today. 
the numerical work we've done on 3SAT with the transverse field driver and encoded into an icing Hamiltonian doesn't show that be doesn't show that behavior. So I'm trying to work out what you've done differently. Yeah, in this case, we, we made simulations with this transverse field and we computed an average case in this uh, uh, for this plot uh, for the worst case scenario in which you we you take the minimal gap of in a batch of uh, in a batch of uh, gaps. Um, okay. I mean, so, I mean so gaps, uh, gaps associated to different instances. Sure, sure. Okay, so what you've done here is selected the worst case ones. Yeah, this is the worst case point. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sure. As opposed yeah. to average. And, case or, or yeah. Also, and also in this plot, you can see the the median of the minimal gap, which is uh, one oh, one okay. over poly n. You you. Yes, yeah, so it's not the size of the gap that's bothering me. It's the um, it's the fluctuations. So remember you showed um, for a different driver, for a different H naught, you were showing that the fluctuations in the position of poly N. Yes, that's, that, that one, yeah. that's, a, that's your question in the case of the transverse field or in the previous? Uh, yeah, so I'm saying, have you also shown that the position of the gap? We've been, uh, yeah, we've, we observed uh, this uh, one over poly n behavior of, of the position of the minimal gap in the case of the transverse field, also in this case. And uh, even, even worse, uh, these worst cases have several minima uh, in many simulations that we run. Yeah, yeah, no, don't. That's so right. the panorama is not better, better with this uh, H naught. Yes, but, but but for worst case, not not but, on average, it's clearly better. Yeah, for worst cases, yes. For worst case, yeah, yeah. No, I that, okay. I haven't got the worst case because you haven't explained what the average case line was. That's the that's the explanation for why it's it's different. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Yes. Good. I see that Kathy has a raised hand. Kathy, over to you. Yeah. Hi. I'm uh, I'm Kathy McGue. I, I I work for D-Wave, and and I I think I have a similar similar question about um, uh, it, the the statement that this makes uh, practical quantum annealing uh, not possible. And I think it has to do with this, the, this, uh, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. This is what I don't understand. You're, mm -hmm. you're giving a worst case result that makes it impossible to guarantee a quantum speed up, but that's the worst case is not necessarily the common case, for example, or the average case. And so, uh, so, so in, in terms of heuristics, you know, in classical, classical heuristics have the same kind of a, a parameterization problem. There's a no free lunch theorem that says, uh, you know, there exists an optimal algorithm that is is linearly efficient, but finding the parameters to, uh, you know, achieve that efficiency is is really the hardness in NP hardness. So, so it, it kind of, um, it, it sounds like a similar result that says, yeah, there exists a, a quantum speed up here, but finding the parameters that are going to guarantee the quantum speed up is is intractable is that is that correct yeah that's the statement because we, yeah. we wanted to to see how much quantum annealing can can give us right right well i i, I guess you know case. the slide where you say uh, therefore the the method is not practical there was something about that on one of your slides i don't think that follows from uh the absence of a worst case guarantee you know it could it doesn't necessarily fail uh, just because you can't guarantee that it sometimes yeah. won't. Yeah, that, you are correct. Uh, the claim, okay. the claim is not about typical. It's not a typicality argument. It's a worst case scenario argument. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's fine. And, and you know, I, I guess I would just say um, um, heuristics, as a general rule, are, don't have any kind of a great guarantee. They have lousy guarantees, but they often work very well in practice. So, mm -hmm. so. Um, 
So, you know, that's just a distinction between the analysis and the practical experience. Here. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice talk. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I had a question, if I may. At one point, you were saying that uh, the annealing time was lower bounded by something that went like the square root of n. And you said even for um, diabetic approaches to annealing, yeah, here it is. Perfect. Which, uh, I, 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 again, I don't really understand that statement. I would imagine if one was being diabetic, you, you can go uh, pretty fast. <laughs> what am I not understanding? You, you, can, you can go pretty fast, but uh, you, you, you won't end up in this model, at least, uh, in, into the solution with, with the probability that you, you, you were parameterizing uh, at the beginning in your statement. Because, yeah. yeah, this is basically the final time to achieve a probability equal to p. Uh, I see. So this is perhaps not unlike Kathy's point that you know, you're, you're looking for some guarantee in some sense. Uh, yes. OK, OK. So basically, this, this I'm saying here that we, we are not only covering the adiabatic case in which you have to uh, made up a really nice schedule to to achieve some some speed up. Yeah. Even in the case in which you naturally evolve your Schrodinger equation, you will have this this bound. And sorry, can you remind me which driver you were using in this in this part of the presentation? Maybe I missed that. Is this one? Okay, right. Thank you. Good, thank you. Uh, any other questions from any other members of the audience? Uh, I think the hand is up again. Sorry, I, yeah, I have another another one. So uh, as far as I know, it, it's the, the notion of this being uh, the parameter setting problem being intractable in general is not uh, and therefore, you can't guarantee an an, a, an exponential speed up over classical, uh, over the you know brute force, mm -hmm. is is not incompatible with the idea that you could, um, in say polynomial time or very efficiently, uh, get uh, to a near optimal you know get within a certain approximation ratio of the ground state, and I'm wondering. Uh, if you feel there's any chance of sort of extending this kind of analysis to an approximation analysis that well, might uh, well turn out turn out uh, differently. Well, uh, one of the things that you can do here, for example, is to trivial trivially modify the the driving Hamiltonian. Uh, basically, you can interpret this equal superposition state projector as uh, as an as if if in the classical case as an initial gaze over over, over your uh, state space in which you are defining, okay, I'm gonna take one state with a probability of one over big N. And if you define this uniform superposition uh, guess uh, over your state space, you end up with this uh, kind of initial initial uh, um, trial for, for your algorithm. But you can mm -hmm. modify that initial guess by an arbitrary initial probability distribution and you can encode it in this in a new file uh, building the same structure and then you will find that you can get rid of the exponentially vanishing uh, gap by by oh, guessing right, right. as close as you want uh, the this uh, probability distribution so, yeah that's that's yeah. a result by Nishimori I think is that isn't there something along those lines sorry then, to interrupt go ahead <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Uh, this was a thing that uh, I came up with yesterday, but uh, oh, I see. I, okay. I didn't, well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then one idea is well, uh, mixing hybrid algorithms in which you can you can do um, more or less good guess on this initial probability distribution and just mm -hmm. uh, boost it with uh, this kind of generalized uh, Grover algorithm. Yeah. For, yeah. 
Yeah, and so I, I guess my question is more about how close can you get to the ground state um, if you uh, if you didn't know anything about the about the shape of the landscape in order to set your um, to set your path. But yeah, these are all these are both interesting variations, I think, on the general problem. Yeah, it's interesting, but at the end, yeah, it's kind of reformulating the needle in a haystack problem. Because if you if you if your search space is exponentially exponentially big and the region in which in which you have your solution is small, guessing guessing a a, a good probability initial probability distribution is like throwing right. a into the sky. I don't know. Right. Uh, classically, guessing is you know it's an n square two to the n space, and you have to guess it. But but. You know, because of the superposition and the 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 the, qu the quantum part is not guessing state by state, right? It's somehow scanning the the whole landscape in a in a cloud like probability distribution, and so I I wonder if that's where the difference might be. Yeah, well, the intuition in this case is that if we have this uh, initial guess, which is, which is the uniform superposition state. Uh, you have that your diff the diffusion of the wave the wave function is spread all, all over the, sp the state space is kind of the same the same the same thing as you as you are pointing out but i don't have any intuition on, on how to build a better driver hamiltonian which is agnostic enough of the instance to to steer better the 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 diffusion of the wave function until, until towards the, the the solution for example so that's that's an open question for me. Thank you. Any final questions? If not, let's uh, thank Aaron uh, once more. Thank you very much, Aaron. Nice presentation. Interesting ideas. Thank you, Paul. Not, not all bad news, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, certainly the requirements for um, the exact solution are, are strict, strict requirements. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. And thank you to everyone for attending and uh, look forward to seeing you all uh, in a week's time. As I mentioned earlier, please just check your emails for the precise title of that presentation, which is to okay, be. Well. Thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing me to give this talk. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you.